Well, hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Cross, and I'm sitting here uh, about to interview another member of the cast from Harry Moon Wand Paper Sitter, Scissors. <laughs> Wand Paper Sitters? Wand Paper Scissors. Yeah, apparently we're babysitters <laughs> now. Hey, you know, I just can't, can't pronounce There is a babysitter in the show, so it works out just fine. Um, so would you please just go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us about your character um, and a bit about yourself for, for us, would you please? Yeah, I'm Henry Allen. I play Titus, who is the big bad of the story. Um... <laughs> Yeah, he's 13. He's not, I guess he's not big bad, but um, yeah, you know, it was a lot of fun to kind of do this character. Uh, as a actor in the area, I've never did voice work much before, ah. so it was a very interesting experience uh, having to go back to my 13-year-old sound. I even went back to my 13-year-old voice when I recorded the song for the, show, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, play. So you, you did some acting, obviously, as Titus, but you also did some singing for it as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. About a couple of weeks ago, they brought me in to record a song called Let's Get Hysterical that Joshua Nicholson wrote. Um, and uh, it took about 50,000 takes, but we got there. <laughs> so you said that you've, uh, you, you've been doing theater stuff for a while, but voiceover was new. What's, uh, what's your theater background? So I started doing theater in sixth grade, I want to say, mm -hmm. and I've never stopped since. It was mainly school stuff for the majority of my uh, school experience. Then when I was about 17, at junior in high school, I started uh, branching out to the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, when I graduated high school, I did not go to college. The plan was to take a gap year. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, just kind of get some outside experience, then go back. And then I tried four times to go back to school and all four failed. Eventually, I just started taking music classes online. I, that okay. was just the way to go. So you are you do a lot of music, I take it then. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yes. Yeah, I do a lot of musical theater is kind of my forte. Ah. All right. So, what's your what's your per particular interest with musical theater? Is it uh, any any particular thing that draws you to it? Um, I get to sing and act at the same time. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Hundred percent. I do not do very well in straight plays. Gotcha. Um, I've done a couple, but yeah, it's just not um, your particular. Cup of yeah, tea. not my personal favorite. I mean, I'll do them. You know, I'll go where the money is. But um, <laughs> yeah, right. Anything yeah, for really. some, some cash, right? Exactly. So with um with your it sounds like significant on stage experience. What you mentioned that voiceover was new to you. Um, so what drew you into the Harry Moon? How did you find out about it? How did you get cast? You know, what was that process like? In high school, I had a tech director who ended up being a part of the Harry Moon team ed moon ah, okay uh he ended up uh he brought me in sort of as a liaison at the beginning for i'm also a writer so turning something into a play turning a book mm -hmm. into a play uh so they kind of brought me in as that and then during the readings they're like you got to do a voice for the for the uh, ed product and i said that's going to be a no from me <laughs> uh, I was pretty adamant on no for that, just because I was just like, for I don't, I don't like accessing that part of my voice where I sound much more whiny, because mm. that's really what it was more than m making my voice higher. It was making it whiny, because mm -hmm. uh, I remember how I was when I was thirteen. And then I, I this is the wrong word to use, but I was kind of ambushed. Uh, <laughs> towards the end there, I showed up to, uh, aud auditions just to, you know, be, I'm just, I'm, I was part of the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I showed up to auditions and they're like, you're going to be Titus. And I'm like, fantastic. Uh, I said, <sighs> well, I can we have other people read for it as well? And they said, yes. Um, so we did have one or two people also reading for Titus, but I knew I lost <laughs> you lost by winning. <laughs> sure, yeah, we can put it that way. No, you're right. So, you're exactly yeah. right. So, what was the what's the big difference for you? Uh, voiceover versus theater. What's the, the the you know a lot of people, you know, maybe listening to radio drama for the first time or, and may not be familiar with the the differences or the similarities. What are the what are the big things that are, are the same or that are different for you um, with the the process? Right. So, um, you know, for 
uh, stage acting, it's very, um, you have to be very big with your facial expressions and your body. Right. That is not needed in a radio play. Uh, so I, I was, uh, I didn't have a hard time switching over really. I think my brain just knew, okay, just the voice. I had to tone it down with my voice, with my body, but amp it up with my voice. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so that was a. I wouldn't say it was a challenge because I, I don't, I don't think it was. I, again, I think my brain just knew to make the switch, yeah. but definitely it was, it was different it's because adjustment. I was not. Yeah, it was adjustment because I was not doing anything with my body. Right. Right, and you really kind of can't because you'll smack the mic, and next thing you know, exactly, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's the yeah, opposite. That of what microphone you want. was right here. Yeah, I'm sure you know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I got one right in my face right now. I'm doing this. Yeah. Um. So with the the the, the performance piece, um, were you in the same room? I've heard a mix of things. So some folks were in the same room with other actors. Some folks were like on Zoom, not necessarily Zoom, but like online. Um, what was the experience for you in that way? From my memory, we did this over, we recorded over a year Yeah, it's ago. been a while. Yeah, we recorded in July of 2022. So, uh, from my memory, uh, I had people in the room with me when I was recording. Mm -hmm. That being said, that was probably not the case for everyone. Yeah. It was I don't remember anyone doing it over the phone or anything like that, but I could be wrong. It, Again, everyone's a little bit different. Ago. Yeah. I know some folks came in a little bit later in the process, so they might have had to do like pickup lines separately or whatever. Yeah, like like that song that we recorded. Yeah. We did that. Example. We did that like three weeks ago. How was how was that for you, the, the recording of the song? I mean you have a musical theater background, so the music part I'm sure you were completely comf comfortable with. But what was the yeah, what was you that know, experience I was, for? Yeah, I was having actually a really rough time learning the song. Josh can attest to that. Um but uh, I was having a little trouble learning the song. I don't know what it was, but I was just like, my brain was just not working that day. Granted, I was doing a show around that time as well. So I, I, I was living out of state and then I came back up to, to record that song uh, at the time. It was difficult because um, I couldn't do my legit voice. Mm. I had to do a character voice yeah. and I hated how I sounded, but I knew that was the character. Because the kid's 13, he's not supposed to sound great. Right. Um, the song is cool, but uh, Titus as himself, uh, pretty self-centered kid, so I didn't want him to sound great, nor should he have. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he was 13 years old in a band, so... Um, but yeah, so I, I, I wish it came easier to me at that point, but... My brain was just so overwhelmed with other stuff that was going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that we got, I mean, we got there. We did get there. And the the recording I heard of it, uh, oh, I'm like, great. yep. I'm like, yep, there's a Titus voice. There's a Titus voice. <laughs> you accomplished the goal of sounding like the character you should have sounded like. <laughs> yeah, I sound nothing like that in real life. Yeah, no, I'm about to say, like, when, when, when I first started listening to you and having, having listened to the radio drama in preparation for this, I was like, wait, this is this is Titus? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I couldn't quite immediately tell the difference. I and mean, then there's a little bit of quality there that I can hear now, but but not close at all uh -huh. um, compared to what it would be. Yeah, I was trying, I get, it goes back to that whiny thing. Yeah, that, that kind of forward pitch nasally kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there it is. Well, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah there it is. No, yeah. uh, actually, uh, that song was actually, uh, the verses were actually an octave low. Okay. Uh, but I'm a tenor. I get. I mean, right now I just woke up, so my voice is lower. But yeah, yeah. I'm a tenor, so that was not doing too well down there. And then finally I was like, can I try it up the octave? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, give it a go. And then that ended up working much better. It kind of unlocked it. Yeah. So tell me a bit about Titus, you know, um, the character, you mentioned he's the bully, kind of he's the antagonist of the story, but how did you approach the, the performance and the character and developing him? I mean, you mentioned the voice changes, but beyond that. What I had to do was kind of not look at him as a bully, mm. look at him as a spoiled kid, which is where he was. That gotcha. being said, he was not really treated the best by his dad. So you kind of see where his bullying comes from uh, because if a kid's not you know, being treated great at home, they're not going to treat anyone great at school. So that actually helped more 
than um, thinking of him as a bully because that's actually how it started. Mm. And then uh, I remember, I remember in between takes, I was reading a scene that we were going to record later with his dad. Uh, we had recorded like two or three scenes at that point. Yeah. And I was, so I was just reading through, just remember going over my lines, making sure I don't stutter, which happens a lot. So I remember re- reading the scene between Titus and his dad. And I was like, this is why the kid's this way. Hmm. I think I knew that. I, but I didn't, that wasn't at the forefront of my mind when I was doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I kind of approached him. And when I approached it that way, I think all the pieces kind of put, was put together. It makes a much more compelling character to have that internal motivation that why did this person become that way? Yeah. Which I think is much more realistic, obviously, Mm -hmm. performer that that you are to kind of unlock that human story. Yeah, exactly. Um, Do you feel like Titus and Harry and the other kids, but specifically Titus, having that kind of human backstory is is accessible to kids who may be struggling with these kinds of things, both on, on both sides of that equation? I definitely think so. I know one or two kids from, I remember one or two kids back when I was in middle school who mm-hmm. definitely were going through some of those issues. Um, now granted, I did not know until well after. Right. But, right. You never but, but when I did, but when I did find out, um, it was, um, not that much of a, uh, surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's for the Titus side of things. For the Harry side of things, um, admittedly, there was not too much of that going on around my neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Or if there was, it wasn't happening to me, and I didn't hear anything about it. It's a, it's. It, there are fascinating stories, you know. I, I mean, did you were you familiar at all with the Harry Man series before you got involved in the project, or was it? I mean, I, no, you mentioned I'd that never Ed, heard of it. Uh, not Ed, you mentioned that your director uh, from from school was involved. Yeah, but as far as the stories go, you had no connection to it beforehand. Yeah, no idea. So it's kind I of got a, a text, fresh thing. I got a text like February or March of or January of 2022 saying uh, possible performance on its uh, uh, opportunity. Call me. And I was like, Yeah, this is cryptic, but okay. <laughs> that was kind of my first thought. But I trust him. I trust him. Moon. So, what do you think of the um, the overall story and the the concept that that it presents? Interesting, definitely very interesting. Uh, it was, it was uh, fun to develop the story as we went because I mean, like we didn't change too much from the book, to my understanding. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But it was definitely interesting, kind of putting together how a play works. And so mm-hmm. when they brought me in, they already had a draft. They already had a draft of it, and then gotcha. we we met probably four or five times before we started to record. Mm-hmm. before we started auditions it was actually cool when i learned that this was not the only book of his ah. with these characters yeah he has he has plenty more books like 23 or something right yeah i think 27 so it's a lot a lot and actually he and i were talking a couple weeks ago when i was recording that song about about you know developing more so stay tuned yeah. on that yeah but, yeah um it was it was very cool to see how the story was uh Progressing. No, I, I got a chance to listen to it, obviously, in, in preparation for this. I mentioned that earlier, and and your performance was was, was wonderful. So well, thank I'm, you. I'm I'm sure that uh, as the story progresses further, um, and they uh, they need more of that. They I'm, I I, uh, I suspect if you're up for it, and they'll they'll be they'll be reaching out to you again. I hope. Ideally, yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, Mark and I were talking about um, Mark, uh, the director or mm-hmm. the writer. Yeah. He, w- he and I were talking about another book that he wants to develop ah. next. His book, uh, Dog Days, he wants to look at next. So we'll see. We'll see how that yeah. goes. Good. Well, would you, I mean, obviously, sounds like you'd be interested in doing more VO in the future. Yeah. Now that I kind of understand how it works, for sure. Fantastic. Well, man, it's been a great talking to you. Um, and uh, I uh, I am excited to, to get this product out to the world. And... Uh, and I hope to hear you on the VO channels in the future. Yes, sir. Great talking to you as well. It was a pleasure. 